Hey everyone, it's Ivan with KeepAdger.com here today to talk about how to zero a red dot, in this case an RMR, on our pistol. The other day in the comments, I ended up having a question on how to zero our red dot on our pistol. So we're going to go over that. Right here I have my target set up. I have two different targets. Doesn't matter, you can use a sharpie, scribble a block, just something, some sort of aiming point. These I just printed off and I throw these up there. What we do want to do though is have at least one of our targets probably low depending on how we're going to shoot this. When we go to zero this we want to be as steady as possible so you can shoot off a bench if you have one available. I don't. I'm going to be shooting from the prone. In doing so I want to make sure this target's low. Reason being if you're shooting from the prone and you have a target way up here depending on what your backstop is, in my case a mountain, if you have a low berm you can end up angling this up over that. Don't really want to do that so if you are shooting from the prone, make sure you set up one low. First thing I'm going to do when I go to zero this is I'm going to go ahead and turn on my optic, in this case Trijicon RMR06, and I'm going to use my adjustments and I'm going to move my red dot to where it lines up on the tip of my front sight post when my front sight post is set up vertically or horizontally where it should be in the rear sight. So as long as whoever put your sights on, backup iron sights, as long as the person did a good job with those, you should be pretty close to where you need to be, at least printing on paper. The other thing I usually do, first string, I usually shoot it about 10 yards, 7 yards, somewhere in there, just to make sure I'm on paper. The last thing you want to do is be throwing rounds because this thing is so far off. So we're going to make sure we're on paper before we eventually move back and get this thing zeroed at 25. Anytime we go to zero, we of course want to create the most stable platform we can. I'm going to be shooting from the prone off these bags, this rest. If you have a bench or something in a local range, use that. Just try and get as stable as you can. And also, of course, when you go to zero, the best thing we could do is do this early morning. That way you have a bunch of nice dew and that way you can get all wet when you get in the prone. All right, so we're looking at this. My group's over here. Got these three little guys right here. Probably should have slowed down, but I didn't. Uh, this was zeroed. I just cranked some windage on it, so I'm not like, oh yeah, look it. It's magically zeroed. Your front sight's gonna get you pretty close. I just shoved my zero off a little bit. So, it being over here, I need to come to the right. Remember I mentioned making your dots small, not really bright? allows you to refine your aiming point. What that allowed me to do, because you're looking at this, and you're like, oh, maybe it comes down a tiny bit. But I was actually aiming pretty much right up here. This was my point of aim, just because it was easier to hold a point of aim right there, as opposed to have try and float my dot in the middle of this circle right here. So figure out where you need to go, and then depending on your optic, go ahead and crank that adjustment. Most all your optics, they're gonna have some sort of little scale on there saying, hey, one click is X amount. In this case, one click is one MOA, so about one inch at 100 yards. Well, I'm at 10 yards, so it's gonna take about 10 clicks to move an inch. And yeah, you're gonna have to figure it out for your optic. When you do go to adjust your optic, one thing I will say is some of them are really distinct. You can feel that click. Others, not so much and it helps sometimes take off whatever ear pro, so when you actually make your adjustments, you can hear that little click. So I have my little ragged group right here. I ended up shooting five rounds. One, I was like, mm, pretty sure that's a flyer. So I ended up continuing, shot four more, and center my group's right about here. My point of aim was pretty much right here at the top of this circle, because of how small the dot is, Again, reduced it down in brightness so I could refine that. So it looks like I'm a little bit high. I'm not going to bother adjusting it here. I'm going to go ahead and move back to the 25 and I'll shoot there and see what I get. All right, so I got my rounds. I got one, two, three, four. That was just wind. Actually, I don't even have a good excuse for that. I don't know what the hell I did. But I did get this good group of three right here from the 25. 
And so when I look at that, be honest with you all encompassing you, i.e. my ability as a shooter, my pistol, this being a bone stock Glock, stock trigger, stock barrel, ammo you're using, actually pretty good ammo. It's the ASIM Precision training ammo, 147 grain, nine mil. And yeah, I look at that and I'm like, that's good to go. Totally happy with that. Conversely, if your ability level, as well as your pistol and ammo, match barrel, all these things, and you end up with this little clover leaf right here, well, you actually have a lot of adjusting to do. And you can go ahead and fine tune that to where it completely matches up with your point of aim. For me, my ability, everything else taken into account, this right here, good to go, my pistol's zeroed. A couple things we can do now that we have this zeroed. One, we can go back and shoot at different yard lines. 3, 5, 7, 10, 15, 25, 500, however far you want to go back and see if there's any shift between your point of aim and point of impact. Chances are it's going to be really minimal. It's not going to make a difference. But you can do that now that we have this zeroed at 25. The other thing you can do is initially we were trying to get close by using our iron sights. If we found that we had to adjust this a lot, especially with windage off of our irons, you can take this thing back if you're not going to do it yourself. Have a gunsmith drift your rear sight over and line up front sight post rear sight with going off this time your red dot. What that's going to do is that's going to bring your iron sights line up with your red dot which we now know and have confirmed is zeroed. So if your irons are way off that's something you can do. If you do that another thing you may want to do is take a sharpie a paint pen and did a video on this marking your rifle i think it's called basically you're going to mark your frame coming down onto your sight what that'll do at a glance it'll let you know if this thing's drifted at all and needs to be readjusted your iron sight your rear sight the other thing you can do if we've zeroed this today we come out next week next month however many times and we're like man this thing is dead on Zero is not shifting on us at all for whatever reason. If you're using different iPro, something like that, iPro can play a big difference in setting your zero. If at that point we're like, hey, this thing's solid, we're golden, you can go ahead and do the same thing. I usually use a yellow Sharpie paint pen and you just make a line across the adjustment portion of your window and elevation as well as the actual housing body. That way, if that line is off at all, at a glance you can see if your zero shifted. Keep in mind, you only want to do that once you establish and you know that your zero is really good. Hopefully this has helped. As always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you.